What if you scribbled an idea on a napkin and it became a limitless scale tech company poised for exit? What if you had a vision of eliminating an inefficiency in your community, industry, or the world, and you had a chance to co-found a company and bring this product or service to the market? What if we could positively impact every social issue with tech? 10X Tech Tank is the number one daily show for everything tech entrepreneurship. And whether you are technical or not, you will learn, be inspired, and witness transformation in the making. People will share tech ideas on napkins. People will showcase minimum viable tech products. People will explain their cash flowing tech companies looking for acceleration. And if the person is right and their idea is right and the market is right and the business model is right, then there's a great chance you will witness some serious magic. We are on a mission to build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. And we invite you to make history with us. Together, we achieve more. Welcome to 10 Tech 10, Jared Yellen here and Eric Noslowski. And we're ready for the entrepreneurs. Always ready. Are you ready? I'm always How ready. How ready are you? I wake up in readiness to hear these ideas. Yeah, we do. And we've been doing this now for quite some time, right? We've had over 12,000 people apply to work with us. Over 12,000 ideas have been submitted in a written application form. And from there, about 600 had a chance to pitch us one-on-one. -on -one. And then one day we thought to ourselves, I think we need to do a show. We need to give these entrepreneurs a chance to pitch in public. We need to give these entrepreneurs a chance that other people, our tribe, watch their pitches and then help influence our decisions, which is why we're here. And what we're looking for with every entrepreneur is the right person with the right idea in the right market and the right business model. And if we could see that in the five minute pitch and then the Q&A after, we're going to invite them to do due diligence with us, where they go much deeper into the process with Eric, with Seth Winters, with Dan Russell, with Andrea, with myself, to see whether or not we can co-found with them in order to build, scale, and sell their company. But we need your help. We need you to influence our decision. So whenever you hear an entrepreneur present an idea and you absolutely love it, please let us know in the chat. And if you stand against it politely, please let us know in the chat. We go through every message and you do influence our decision. There was one idea in one of the first episodes where we didn't see it, but the chat did. And we ended up going through due diligence with that person. And there's a chance we're gonna co-found with them. It's pretty exciting. So with that, let's see who our first entrepreneur is in the tank. And we're back in the tank with another entrepreneur. What is your name and where are you calling from? David Smith calling in from Utah. Awesome, welcome David from Utah. All right, you got three to four minutes. Please share your tech idea. Uh, the, the growth of the, uh, a lot of people getting out on their own and solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and building their businesses grow to a point where they need some kind of technical support on site, uh, at their business. Not everybody need, can do remote technical support because sometimes you can't connect for various reasons and you, your business or your company hasn't grown to the point where it can sustain an on-site tech support person or a tech person there. So on-call support persons are what uh, you need occasionally. And that's what the idea is. Uh, the idea would be to have an, an app, a small phone application branded to the, to the business that they could connect with and schedule an appointment, much like you know the hundred other scheduling apps that are out there and they could pick the time that they want you to come by and they would be able to see your immediate availability for you to drop by and help them solve their problem so they can get back to their business and not worry about their technical support issues. That's essentially the, the core of it. What, what motivated this idea? Um, I've done this before. Uh, in a smaller business, but uh, couldn't get it to scale. I didn't, as a solo guy running the whole show, I didn't have time to also do marketing and sales and, and build that as well. I was too busy su sustaining the people that I had eventually uh, acquired as clients, which you hit a point that you, you don't have time. And you know, so like the other businesses, uh, I didn't have a a way to scale it at the time, and so I sold the business off. Well, 
fund other pursuits. So it's it's pretty much tech support, right? Like we're focusing on tech support, a platform to connect people that need tech support with technical people. Am I accurate with the whole thing? So a business model is some form of a transaction fee. Is that accurate? Or are we charging a fee to one uh, of these? Well, the the rates, the billing and the, and the, the monetization of it would be, um, you know, the actual work. Uh, the billing rate would be $65 to $75 an hour for hourly rate on demand support or some type of a service contract, uh, which would be billed based on the number of nodes or the computer device, electronic devices the business had, be that a printer or a computer or a handheld or a tablet, whatever. And we just bill a rate around 17, $18 is about what the industry is charging right now per device as a monthly rate. So would this compete with the multiple service provider industry? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we so, so I might be missing something. So the sixty-five to seventy-five dollars an hour, are these all our employees, or we're going out to technical people and we're just fixing their hourly rate? And like this is just what it is. You're going to keep fifty. We're keeping twenty-five. Like, tell me. Speak well, I wasn't. I wasn't planning on on doing contract support work because the 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 key to a successful growth of the business like this is the type of customer support you're able to provide. And if you can't control the people that you that you've got in the different uh, you know, the different markets that are out there, the different cities and locations, you're not going to be successful in this type of business. You know? you know, I'm looking more. I would be looking to uh, engage and get people, you know, first with myself building it, and then finding people to do it because I don't have enough time to do every city. And you can't do it all on demand everywhere. I'm in Utah. I can't work in Seattle, but finding the right person to do it. That, gives good customer support is the key. I can teach the technical stuff, that, that's easy. That's the easy part. It's the, the soft skills, the, the emotional understanding and being able to integrate. So how do, how do you get to market? <clears throat> like, how do you how do you bring this product to market and get users? Uh, that's where the, the power of the marketing mission comes in. Uh, it would need to be um, lots of marketing and into each area that it needs to grow because it would need to be targeted marketing when you're offering on site help. Remote tech support is completely possible, although that can't always work because if you can't connect, you can't get remote support. So there would need to be, you know, that would ideally be the bulk of it because that's the most efficient way to do it. But so are we building like an army of like, like an Uber has like, as millions of drivers, are we going to have like millions of technical people? And then we're going to have tens of thousands of I don't think it would be millions. <clears throat> it would depend on the, the level of work that you're getting. But yes, it would be some kind of a, a split between the, the billing rate and the going rate for the, you know, the person. It would be something that could either be franchised or you could deal with it as a, uh, uh, so a I think our employee. What I'm also missing, I think, is how is this 10 times better than hiring a multiple service provider for your business? Well, that's essentially what you would be is, is a local service provider. Uh, 10 times better would be the type of people that you're using and the type of service that you're providing, as well as the. So would you like be acquiring existing multiple service providers and telling them you never need to worry about business development again? We got it for you. You just be a great service provider. And then, so we're really kind of a lead platform. Do you see it that way? Uh, I thought about that, but it's, and that's completely possible, but acquiring those businesses as one who acquired a business like this is, you know, it's a lot of work to talk to people, to talk them out of their, you know, gig that's supporting their life into you know, joining a bigger, a bigger organization that can grow with them and help them grow. Um, you'll find a lot of guys don't are not, are not interested because you know they built their solo business because they didn't want to work for somebody else. But being able to communicate with them and show them the power of uh, you know better marketing, better sales, better business development, better business management can help them grow from you know supporting themselves and their family to supporting a larger a larger compensation for themselves. Got it. So well, right this moment, are you doing any aspect of this right now? Or like, is this, are you doing this just small scale and you want to build right tech and scale it? No. I, okay. I've, I've tried to do this again over the years in different markets.
it so I just I, I'm not never been in a financial position that I could afford to do that deal because it's a lot of work to get started. Got it. Cool. All right. So what does everybody think? Uh, is this a platform that you would use? Is if you're running a business, you need technical support, would this be like the holy grail solution for you? Eric, what are your thoughts on next steps? So here I'm going to be leaning heavily onto our 10x principle, right? We're always looking for ideas that the solution is 10 times better than the status quo, whether that's a direct competition or it's an indirect competition. And whether so it's got to be saving 10x more time, uh, putting 10x more dollars in your pocket, saving 10x more dollars, you know, as an expense. And I'm just not seeing that for this right now. I, I don't know where it's, it's you know, that much better than getting a multiple service provider. It sounds a lot like you're betting on, you know, your ability to attract and retain better people that the customer service would be exceptional, which great. That's, that's awesome. A lot of businesses have been built like that. I just don't see where the, the tech product would, would fit into that. Yeah, I think I'm I'm in this, the same boat. I don't see the tech, but I see you. Like you, you obviously have a track record doing this. So I'm going to say maybe, and I'm going to have our team send you uh, two exercises to complete. It's totally up to you. I'm just full transparency. I'm not seeing it, but maybe I will see it if you do these exercises because maybe there's elements of this that we haven't gotten to just in the five minutes that that are that 10x better. Like there's something that we're going to build from a platform perspective that allows us to scale. The multiple service provider market in a way that's never been done before like take over the entire market so thanks for coming to the tank and i'm excited to see what you come up with with these exercises all right after this commercial we'll have another entrepreneur in the tank what if you could increase profit and transparency on your farm for generations to come what if you were able to save dozens of hours each month what if you were able to reduce the time and stress spent on bookkeeping during harvest season what if we had an answer to your prayers the solution is called field pocket Field Pocket is a software application to keep track of farmers' harvest data. From grain contracts, to managing delivery tickets and settlement sheets, to linking all the documents in organized reports, the app automates previously manual tasks on the farm to create a more efficient and reliable tracking system for farmers, allowing them to ditch their paper and pen approach and automate data analysis related to grain tracking and payments. But enough of the tech talk. Field Pocket will give you time to spend with your children. Field Pocket will eliminate the stress of running the business of the farm. Field Pocket will reap you benefits that you never thought possible. Here at Field Pocket, we aim to increase your quality of life on the farm for generations to come. Simple as that. We invite you to join a Field Pocket family so that you have more time for your family. Who's up in the tank? What is your name and where are you calling from? Hey, do you hear me? Yes, yes. you do. What is your name and where are you calling from? Oh, awesome. My name is Zakari Ivanov and I'm calling from Bulgaria. Oh, okay. great. Awesome. I think you're the first person calling in from Bulgaria. I was going to say, I think we're going to put another country. There we go. Well, and your name is Zaharia. Is that how you say it? Zahari, Zahari. It's like, you can call me Hari. It's same like Harry Potter. Okay, we'll call you. Sounds good. All right, so you got five, uh, three to four minutes. Please share your big tech idea. Awesome. Can I share my screen very briefly? Please do, yeah. Okay, I will be very quick then. So my idea is called Decentralized Fleet Control Pane. Uh, it's a software, it's an application for, for uh, logistic companies and transportation companies. So before I describe my idea, I'm going to share a few words about myself. I'm senior software engineer and architect. I have 10 plus experience in the software of Silicon Valley companies like VMware, Docker, etc. I'm a big geek of the machine learning in AI. And I'm also a co-founder of the startup that is called GrowWise. It was a bit of a successful one. Uh, so yeah, I'm married and I don't want to waste my time for me. So which is the target market of my application? The target market is logistic and fleet companies. So there is a statistic that 35% of the big companies are using logistic management systems. 54 of these companies are using tracking inventory and 37% of these companies are relying on digital management. So there is a huge gap in the market because there isn't a solution that unify all of this in one central place. There isn't a central application that provides all of the cool tech features that logistic and fleet companies can and need to have a successful business. And there is another interesting statistic that uh, up to 2026, the, this market will grow up to 4 
1.8 billion. So as I said, there is a gap and this gap has to be filled. And uh, what is missing is the single application that has a vehicle tracking, vehicle management, delivery dock, invoices dock management. Uh, yeah, basically all this modern stuff combined in the single central place. So my solution is one centralized platform which is actually, it is decentralized because it has two profiles, one for managers, the people who are working in the office and one for the drivers who are driving vehicles. So uh, there are two profiles, office guys and the drivers. There is a wife tracking of vehicles. You will be able as a manager to wife tracking where your vehicle is, where your truck is, where your uh, van is, whatever the vehicle is. There is a special feature that is for vehicle management. Uh, when this vehicle needs some repair stuff, when this vehicle needs some servicing and so on and so forth. And the most interesting one, one of the most interesting one is documents reporting. As soon as the driver gets to the destination, the driver receives some document. It's a proof of delivery. And the managers, we are going to store all of the documents on their end. They will have the history of the rights and they will be able to operate their business more successfully based on some statistic and data. And also at last but not least, OCR for reading the dog data because now on, when the driver reaches the destination, driver takes a photo of the document and they upload it to some system or so on. They are very old system, I did the research. We can use the OCR for text recognition that automatically takes the picture of the document and transfer it to our application internal data where the operators and managers will be able to see the data and everything will happen automatically. So I think that I fit in time. Awesome. Great job, man. Really fantastic. You, you can stop sharing your screen. Um, okay. You're finished. Great. Cool. I got a couple questions for you. First off, great yes. presentation, incredible background. So love the success that you, you're coming with. So um, who is the user? Like if, if we had to go and like sell this right now, who's paying for it and what are they paying for? Like what's the actual financial model? Okay, so the user of this application is the owners, the managers of the logistic and fleet companies. They will need this application because through this application, they will be able to most successfully ruin their business, rule their business. They will have yeah. in one central place all of the data of all of the rights, where exactly driver is located right now, how many more minutes until the end destination, and all this data will be kept. The managers are going to receive the applications if the driver is going slow, they're going to receive the application if the driver is going too fast, or there is some issue with the delivery. Or... Is it an application? So it's like it's on the mobile device of the driver, and then that's how it syncs up with the, the tech. At, at headquarters, is that is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. Because it's a, like a SaaS application and the data is synced to the cloud. So each time when oh. the driver performs some activity, this data will be synced to the cloud. And from the other end, managers and the guys who are in the office will be able to see some notifications that something is going on. Okay. So there's no hardware though, right? It's all it's all software. Cloud all SaaS. And yeah. what, and and I, what's the fee? What do, you, what do you envision the fee being to the, uh, the logistics company? uh yeah so just to answer to the previous question no hardware just the driver and his phone and the application on this phone no additional hardware so uh yeah so about the fee uh it's a uh, depends on the company depends on the size of the company but uh, i check the competitors and they charge something like one two dollars per driver per day got it yeah cool Awesome. So that, that was my next question. Then, Eric, because yeah. I was I was just going to ask, what is the status quo today? Like, how are they doing? What they're how are they accomplishing this? Yeah, even if it's a low tech solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's full of tech solution, but the problem is that uh, most of them are rely on the third party hardware system. So they require you to have a separate GPS in your uh, in your van or truck, whatever the vehicle is. So uh, the other solutions provide very old kind of a software with no very intuitive view. And we can rely on the very modern technology. I'm software architects for 10 plus years, and we can provide a very modern solution, very scalable solution that will be more faster and more reliable than the others. And also it will be the first solution that will provide OCR 
for this kind of the business yeah. by OCR I mean that image recognition yes wonder yeah and so do the drivers do they actually prefer having a separate GPS so they don't have to use their phone or would the company have to provide a different phone how, how would that work well for sure every company has a GPS in the truck but this GPS yeah. is not used for the technologies you know if they want to invest in some tech cool technologies they need to buy some additional stuff that to bind to the technology but not in our solution in our solution we'll have just the application on driver's phone got it cool and then so where did this come from for you like when, when did you start thinking about this like why did you even start thinking like i mean you have a great background so that's awesome yeah. where did this fit into the equation well currently i'm working for a company that is called via i don't know if you guys heard it it's very similar to uber it's for transportation as a services so i have a lot of background in this area and i really love uh, to change the way how the world is moving i gained this knowledge in my company so yeah listen i, I can feel the fire in your eyes i love it man it's awesome yeah, it's so <laughs> it's just, you're like you're a big data you, you even say in your presentation you're a big data geek and then you want to work in, in logistics you know i think yeah. that, that's so really? interesting yeah. specifically yeah. how big the, the market is for logistics and it's only growing right with all of the how everybody wants things in you know it used to be two days and now people are like oh i now i need it in two hours like logistics is just needed over and over and over again and people think that self-driving cars is the solution to that but it's going to take a while even if the self-driving car is capable for the infrastructure of the, the hey. internet of things that actually handle self-driving cars so there's still yeah. this, this yeah, yeah. i think this is a really interesting idea and I, run, I would want to head yeah I'm a, yes well. yes yes awesome idea like so hard. i mean awesome like everybody in the audience like what are your thoughts on this but I want to share why we're, we're like so enthusiastic. So we talk about right person. Your track record speaks for itself. It's it's exceptional. Uh, Eric loves that you love nature too. So you guys that that in common. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, no, we do love that you love nature. No, I'm serious. Great, great track record. What you're doing today is also so relevant. So like you you understand like the space and you want to radically change it. Like you see a, you see an opportunity to disrupt. The idea is really interesting, right? Like like this exists, but it's antiquated. So this is the better, yeah. faster version. Of what already exists so there's not like a ton of education like logistics companies know that they have to have some mechanism to track and to organize yeah. uh, the market also so to me like we look at red ocean blue ocean right highly yeah. competitive market is really expensive to enter into blue ocean no competition is also expensive because it's like educate the user on the problem and then sell them your solution but this is a pink ocean like i mean there's there's no one that's confused that they need some type of platform and i love the business model i mean the one to two dollars a day for a driver and, and maybe there's ways we can get really disrupted with that too so the recurring yep. new aspect so i'm yes on, on due diligence awesome presentation like really concise got everything out in a very short period of time we'll definitely be in touch and can't wait to meet you awesome job in the tank so let's see who's up at this commercial break thank you the insurance adjuster industry has not received much love in the space of innovation, ever. Professionals in this industry are faced with extremely arduous processes that make scaling difficult and quality of life poor. Claim Guru assists public adjusting businesses by providing powerful tools for managing every step of the claim process, from origination to settlement and beyond. In addition, Claim Guru will help professionals stay on top of their adjusting caseload proactively guiding them through the process, which makes the customer experience significantly enhanced. Our client-centric approach helps to increase your company's capacity, providing you with the tools you need to grow and succeed. From lead management, contract execution, scheduling, claims filing, claims management, loss scoping, loss documentation, document creation and distribution, file transferring, claim activity documentation, task reminders and organization, form filling and filing, payment intake and distribution. The process is currently way too complex and time consuming to allow for maximum profits. Until now, we invite you to take your public adjusting business to the next level by hiring a guru, the one and only Claim Guru. And there we got it, Biggie. More entrepreneurs pitching us in the tank, sharing their dreams, sharing their aspirations, sharing their idea. I hope as a member of our tribe, because that's what you are, you're our 10X Tech Tank Tribe. Say that three times fast. 10X Tech Tank Tribe. So one, 10X Tech Tank Tribe. Two, 10X Tech Tank Tribe. Four, go for four. 10X Tech Tank Tribe. Hey, he's been practicing. <laughs> I knew it. He was practicing last night, I knew it. But listen, 
as a member of our tribe, we want to thank you for being present with us. There'd be no reason for us to do this show if you weren't here. But the reason we do the show is not to hear pitches. Like, that's not what this is about. We're hearing pitches regardless of the show. We want you to hear pitches. We want you to help contribute into the process. We want you to help co-author the story to build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. Yes, this is your opportunity to be part of that experience. That's why you got to show up every night. Because you're going to see ideas that eventually are no longer ideas. They're actually companies built for scale and then for exit. And that's a really exciting journey to go on. But what's even more exciting to, than watching it is to do it. So you got a tech idea? Because everybody does, right? Everybody's got a tech idea. Everyone, and I know you do as well. So right now, head over to 10xtechtank.com and submit your idea so our team can review it and we can get you on the show. Because if we're ever going to say yes, you're going to have to come to the show. And I know you want us to say yes. In addition, if for any reason you have not signed up for our daily reminders yet, head over to TEDxTechTank.com, sign up right on the page. We'll remind you daily when we go live, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we got a really cool gift for you. It's called the Perfect Pitch Kit. It's exactly what you need to prepare for any pitch. So with that, thank you for your presence. Thank you for co-authoring the story. And remember, together we achieve more. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Which napkin will become the next exit? Which MVP will evolve into a unicorn? Which cash flowing tech company will reach the next level? Our hope and desire is that it's yours. Your idea, your MVP, your cash flowing tech company. Now is your time. Head over to 10xincubator.com and submit your idea so that you get on the tank and give us the chance to transform your napkin into an exit. That's 10xincubator.com. That's 10xincubator.com. Let's go.